In this video, we're going to go into a bit more detail about what can be found inside atoms. We're going to look at what atoms are, the different subatomic particles, the subatomic structure, and in particular, the electron shells. Okay, so atoms are indivisible particles that make up all matter. They're very, very small. So they're about one nanometer or one tenth of a millionth of a millimeter. So very, very small. All atoms of the same element are identical in that they have the same properties and atoms of different elements are different and have different properties. They're made up of three different subatomic particles and we talked about these in the last video. We have protons. Protons have a charge of one positive. They have a mass of one and they are found inside the nucleus. Neutron is neutral, neutron, neutral. So it has a charge of zero. It again has a mass of one and is found inside the nucleus. Electrons are negatively charged and they have a relative mass of zero and they're found orbiting the nucleus. Now when we say that electrons have a relative mass of zero, they obviously do weigh something, but the, what they actually weigh is negligible compared to what the protons and neutrons weigh. The protons and neutrons weigh about the same amount, and electrons weigh somewhere in the vicinity of one two thousandth of that of a proton or neutron. So relatively speaking, it weighs practically nothing. So as I said before, we have protons and neutrons in the nucleus, that small, dense nucleus, and then we have the electrons orbiting in different shells, and we'll get into more of, about the shells later. But what we'll first look at is the numbers of different things. And we can work out the structure or how many different subatomic particles there are by using the information found in the periodic table. Now, in the periodic table, every element or every type of atom has an atomic number and all the atomic numbers are different and they go one two three etc and then they have an atomic mass and the atomic mass isn't a whole number uh, it's a weighted average so from this information we can tell a couple of things firstly the atomic number is the number of protons that an atom has. So if an atom has uh, changes its amount of the number of protons that it has, it changes the element that that atom makes up. And the atomic mass is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, because we remember from before that protons weigh one and neutrons weigh one. So added those together, we get the atomic mass, and we don't have to worry about electrons in that because they, relatively speaking, weigh nothing. So, therefore, we can tell the number of protons equals the atomic number. Neutrons is the atomic mass, so the number of protons and neutrons, minus the atomic number, which is the number of protons, giving us the number of neutrons. And the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. And this is because the atom needs to be overall neutral. So if we have a number of charged positively charged protons, we need a number of negatively charged electrons to counteract that, to make it neutral overall. So, for example, we can have a look at carbon. Carbon has an atomic number of six, therefore it has six protons, and has an atomic mass of 12. So the number of protons plus neutrons equals 12, and we know that there are six protons, so there must be six neutrons. And because there's six protons, we know that there's also six electrons. Now, which shell these electrons fall into will depend on the amount of energy that they have. Each shell has the same amount of energy. The first shell has spot for two electrons only. And the next two shells have spots for eight electrons. So it goes two, eight, eight. And each shell must be full with electrons before you go into the next shell. And this is because as the increasing shells, it increases the energy level. 
So it's easier for the electrons to fill up those lower energy shells than higher energy shells. And the electrons in the outer shell are referred to as valence electrons. So going back to our carbon, we have our six protons and six neutrons, both found in the nucleus. We then have six electrons orbiting that, and the first shell is capable of holding two electrons, so two of those six will go into the first shell. We then have four electrons left over, and those four electrons will take up positions in the second shell. In this video, we've looked at atoms, the building blocks of matter, and we've found that atoms with a different structure will have different properties, and with the same structure will have same properties. Uh, Subatomic particles, the positively charged proton, negatively charged electron, and neutrally charged neutron. Subatomic structure, as to the numbers of the protons, neutrons, and electrons, and where they're found. And the electron shells that have a possibility of two electrons in the first shell and eight electrons in the second and third shells.